is up stack in ohana this is aloha stacker and welcome back to the channel we hit our thousand subscribers we did it we did it i just don't say we for a reason i couldn't have done this without all of you you are all great friends uh stacking family it is amazing i cannot believe we've made it here uh in fact we didn't just make it we pretty much blew past it i think i'm around 1015 right now so that is awesome thank you all so much uh, and in today's video, though, let's get back to that. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Aussie Shipwreck series, the Australian Shipwreck series, a four coin series. As you can see, we've got three lined up here and three other and some more here. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but let's go ahead and let me show you a quick piece of channel mail that came and then we'll get to uh, the next draw for the GA. So rock and roll. <laughs> what we got right here, got a letter. And this is from our good friend CGB Matt Coins. And those of you who don't know Matt, this guy is probably one of the most passionate guys of coins I have ever worked with. This guy is fantastic. What a great guy. And look at this sticker. It's a two by two, so it fits in a slip. Perfectly designed that way. I think that's actually a great idea. I think the next time, uh, I may actually do that also, so that anytime I give stuff away or I trade, I drop a sticker in that's a two by two into a flip. So that's pretty awesome. And on the back he wrote, Aloha, Susan B. Anthony wanted to visit Hawaii. I had to give her some color tone so she wouldn't get a sunburn, CGB Matt Coins. And as you know, not only does he collect and stack, but he plays around with toning of coins. Now, he tones only – he doesn't tone, tone coins that are collector items. He does just ones that are already damaged or just not worth anything else that's special. So he did send me some cool coins. So check this out. So let's go ahead and bust these out one at a time and show them off. Let's go ahead and do a zoom. Oh, look at that, some shipwrecks. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and check out some of the toning he did. Look at this. Susan B. Anthony, 1979 silver dollar how cool is that look at the beauty on that oh look at the i love the eagle on this one isn't that awesome eagle sitting on the moon with the earth in the background that is just awesome there so that's cool thank you matt for the susan b anthony he also sent me a buffalo nickel that he's toned so let's bust that out of the uh, flip and he sent me a 1937 now that is dark. I don't know if that came out. It was supposed to come out like that. Ooh, look at this thing, man. This thing is, this thing is beat up. So these are the type of coins he tones. It tones everybody. He doesn't tone coins that are going to have any numismat major numismatic value or any numismatic value. Value. So look at that. That is really cool. And then we also got sent. I don't think this one's toned though. I think this one's just a penny. I don't, he might not have even toned that buffalo nickel. That might just be a buffalo nickel in really bad condition. But uh, he'll have to let me know that because I'm not 100% sure. But I think that Anthony's definitely toned. And he sent me an Indian head penny. Let's see if we get that clear into the camera. There we go. A 1907. I believe that's like the most minted Indian head penny of the, uh, the series. And uh, one cent. So that's a beauty. Thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the really cool sticker. Uh, I know you, I've sent you my sticker. So uh, check him out. Check his channel out. Uh, he does a lot of short videos. So they're easy to watch, easy to get through. But he's, he's got a great presence, talks really cl clearly and concisely. And he's really passionate and talks deeply about the coins and knows a lot about them. And he puts a lot of us to shame with his knowledge. And that, and that is just awesome. And we need people like him in the community. So let's go ahead and pull back and let's go and do what you've all been waiting for. Let's pick a winner for draw number two. And here's another thing I want to say about this subscriber golf. I'm going to keep doing this until I just get bored of doing it. I'm going to tell you that straight up. This, we ain't going anywhere. This is going to happen video after video until I'm ready to just stop giving stuff away. So let me go ahead and get the tablet out. Let's show you. So we're going to go based off the last video, which was... Uh, so basically, remember the rules. It's Basically, you have to comment on the previous video. So you'll have to comment on this video to be eligible for the next draw. But uh, this is the last video. It looks like we've got 373 comments, although those are responses too. So let's go ahead and do a copy. And just so you know, it's 7.26 p.m. on Thursday evening, Hawaii Standard Time. We're going to go ahead and pop that in here. Come on. Paste. We're going to filter duplicates, and then we'll get the comment generation going. And there is 155 unique comments. Now, remember, you got to be publicly subscribed. So I've got my computer on the side here. So as soon as we draw a name, if, if I don't know you, I'm going to check to verify that you're subscribed. If not, then we'll draw another winner. So let's go ahead and do this. Who's ready? Start. And Silver Cycle, nice for sure. Now Silver Cycle, let's go ahead and double check to make sure you are actually subscribed publicly. Okay, there's your page. Let's go to channels. 
And yes, you are subscribed. So congratulations. Please send me an email at alohastacker@gmail.com, And I'm going to show you what you won. So this is pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. We've got ourselves, let's go ahead and do a zoom -age, a Mercury Dime from 19, 1917. I uh, can't looks can't tell if there's a mint mark on there. It's pretty worn down, but that's not all. You're getting a mercury dime, and you're also getting a pretty slicked out standing Liberty quarter. Uh, can't make up the date on that one either, but it is nice either either way. So you have won yourself a mercury dime and a standing Liberty quarter. These are for you, my friend. Thank you very much for uh, subscribing to me and being a member of the channel. Uh, once you hit me up, I will get those out to you in the mail. As soon as tomorrow, if you can email me, or not tomorrow, but yeah, tomorrow night, I guess. Uh, but thank you very much. Way to go. Congratulations, Silver Cycle. Welcome to the channel. And with, let's go ahead and get rid of this and get back to the video. All right, so what are we talking about today, everyone? We are talking about the Australian Shipwreck Series. And as you know, there's been three so far. We've got the Batavia. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about these because uh, I've done that in previous videos. And I'm not, I don't want to waste your time because make this video too long. So there's the obverse, got Queen Elizabeth, got the wreckage. So this this uh, so this came out in 2020. Then the second one in the series was the Ver the Verguldreich. And these are the first uh, coins that ever came out as a triangle. 2020 as well. So that is a beautiful coin. And then the third in the series is the Zubdorp. It's a beautiful, another beautiful, beautiful coin. Look at the cash, man. These coins are just absolutely stunning. And this came out in 2020 as well. As you can see, there's an empty slot there for coin number four. But I also want to show you, I also own 1% of the entire antique vintage because they only minted 1,000 of each of these. Now, these over here, they minted uh, 20,000 of each. So there's 20,000 vintage. I only have one of those because those are part of, those are my personal collection. Uh, and then I've got, uh, I ordered 10 of the antique rounds when they first came out. So I got 10 and the antiques are just Oh man, they're just so much better looking than the than the, the BUs. So that's the Batavia. I own 10 of those, which is 1% of the entire 1,000 mintage. And then there's the uh, Virgul Drake. Another beautiful, beautiful triangular round. I guess I don't know if you call these rounds. I guess they're just triangles. Now look at that. Oh man, that one, that one just has awesome detail. Look at that. Look at that right there. Is that a whale carcass? I don't know. <laughs> so, and then the, the Zoop Dorp is our, is our third. That was a one that came out, the last one to come out, 1712. Another beautiful, beautiful antique round. Look at that, gorgeous. So, so now let's talk about the latest and greatest, and that is the Zwick. <laughs> if that pronounced that right, the Zwick. Zwick. There you go, the Zwick. And of course, it's upside down, and the reason why is because all these are shipwrecks, so the ship sank. And then here's the other side. Another beautiful coin put out by the Royal Australian Mint. So you're going to enter service right there next to your brethren. And I'm going to show you off. I also, I didn't stop there. I got the antique version too. And I bought 1% of the entire mintage. So I effectively own 1% of the entire antique mintage of the entire series, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I think just that's cool. Not bragging about it. Just think it's cool. Because actually, I would, I would like to actually share these with the community at some point and uh, sell them by the set. So if this is something you're interested in, buying the whole set of antiques, uh, let me know. Uh, just curiosity. So now I've owned all four. See, check that out. 44 ounces of beautiful shipwreck silver. I wonder if we can maybe slide these around a little bit so we can save some room on the desk. Maybe I can zoom this in. And then I'm going to tell a little story about the Zwick so everybody can learn about it. Well, that's okay. What we'll do, we'll do this instead. What we'll do is we'll just go ahead and show off the four there. All right, so real quick, I'm going to talk about the coin itself. Uh, the Australian, the, the Australian Shipwreck series from the Royal Australian Mint features four unique images of ships from the era of exploration that were commissioned by the Dutch East India Company. Each of the ships featured in the release of the series were used by the Dutch, India's, Dutch East India Company in support of its trade colonies in the South Pacific. Moreover, each of the designs represents a ship that met a terrible fate off the coast of Western Australia en route to Batavia. So each one of these ships sank off the coast of Western Australia. So that is that is pretty crazy. So I'm gonna show, I'm gonna just keep showing these coins while I read. Uh, so on the obverse of the 2021 one ounce shipwreck Zwick silver coin is a depiction of the Queen Elizabeth II. Now they all have the same uh, queen image on the top here, at the, on the top of the uh, obverse. Her Majesty is featured at the top of a design element in one of the three corners in the Ian Rank Broadley effigy from 1998. 
All included on the side of the coin is the scene that played out as the survivor struggled to survive after the Z-Wick was shipwrecked at the Hootman Albatross, a chain of 122 islands and coral reefs on the Indian Ocean off the coast of Australia. So let's take a look. Where did I put the... Uh, so let's take a look at the, uh, the image in an antique version. There it is right there. So you've got the queen at the top, and then you've got them showing uh, how they were uh, shipwrecked. You can see the ship off in the distance, uh, off in that corner, and then the and then the survivors, uh, spare, you know, surviving on what they could. The Z-Witch was built in 1725 as the East Indian Men, a general term, general term for sailing ships used by the Dutch East India Trading Company and other major trading powers of the 17th and 18th centuries. The ship measured 134.5 feet in length and had an armament that included 36 iron and bronze, bronze guns with six additional swivel guns. So give me another close-up of the ship. The reverse of the 2021 Australian Shipwreck Zewick Silver Coin features the image of the ship in all its glory as it sails confidently along calm waters. The element is framed by ship's ropes and the ornate elements and includes the Dutch initials of the Dutch East India Company as VOC. So where's that VOC at? Is it down? There? I think it's down in the corner here. Is it down in the corner? All right, so with that, let's go ahead and bust that back open. Now I'm going to read you the actual incident of how, how it all occurred. The Zewick was wrecked on the Hopeman Albatross on 9 June 1727. The Zewick did not break up immediately, and goods, including the treasure chests, were transferred to Gun Island. It was obvious to the crew that the ship could, not, could never be floated from its position locked into the reef. A group of 11 of the fittest survivors and first mate set off for Batavia in the longboat on 10 July, but were never heard from again. The survivors then built a boat enable, enabling 82 of the initial crew of 208 to reach their original destination of Batavia on 30 April 1728. Utilizing materials from the wreck and local mangrove timber, the crew constructed this boat, some sort of a sloop about 16.5 meters long, which they named Slopey, the first European boat built in Australia. On 26 March, 88 of the men set off on a one-month journey to Batavia. Six died on the way, leaving 82 of the initial 208 to arrive in Batavia on 30 April, 1728. Batavia's Council of Justice prosecuted skipper Jan Steins for losing the Zewick and, falsely, and falsifying the ship records. He lost his position, salary, and property to the company. In 1840, the crew of the HMS Beagle found relics at the campsite, including a VOC cannon, and two coins dated 1707 and 1720, which helped to confirm that the site was that of the Zewick. They named the Zewick Channel after the wreck. In the 1880s and 90s, a large volume of material was recovered during the during guano mining. Guano mining um, is bat droppings, <laughs> for those of you who don't know that. Items including bottles, coins, wine glasses, jars, pots, spoons, knives, musket, and cannonballs, cannonballs tobacco, and pipes were found. Florence Broadhurst, son of entrepreneur Charles Edward Broadhurst, and director of the Broadhurst and McNeil Phosphate Company, cataloged the finds, initially thinking they were from the VOC ship Batavia, and ended up donating most of the Western Australian to the Western Australian Mint Museum in Perth. In 1952, during a visit to Geraldton, Lieutenant Commander M. R. Brommel of the Royal Australian Navy learned that rock lobster fisherman B Bill Newbold had found a cannon on the seabed, and during a subsequent visit, Brommel located a cannon on the leeward side of the Half Moon Reef. After an elephant tusk was found two years earlier, after an elephant tusk found two years earlier put him on the trail, in March 1968, journalist and diver Hugh Edwards led divers Max Kramer, Neil McLaughlin, and museum staff Henry Bingham and Dr. Colin Jack Hinton to the seaward side of the reef to find the main wreck site. The Western Australian Museum subsequently conducted several expeditions to survey the site and to recover artifacts, the most notable in 1976 by Katharina Engelman Sundberg, who also completed a catalog of all the findings from the site. So that is a really cool story of the shipwreck of the Zewick, uh, the, the last coin, the final coin of this series. So the four triangle, these are the first four triangular coins ever minted. And let's see if they make some more. I think they should. I think they're really cool. I really like these coins. I really like the series. That's why I bought all of the BUs and so many of the antique versions of the coin, which I really, really like. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in owning uh, these four as a whole series if you missed out or if you're missing one even maybe I might even be willing to consider breaking it up uh, if you can convince me that you're missing one and that I can and that you want to buy one uh, that's something we can talk about so hit me up on email and say hey I'm interested in the series uh, and we'll see what they're going for uh, and 
I'll probably beat any price anybody's willing to give you. I'd rather these stay within the community of collectors like us uh, than just be flipped for a quick profit. So very cool. Very cool and very beautiful coins. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is what I have for everybody today. Uh, it's the whole Australian Shipwreck series. It's finally complete, and I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Oh, and one more thing before we, before we, uh, before we finish up. So I went ahead and looped. I took my loop, and I looked at the meteor rock after the video. And, that, and there's like little crystalline colors in it. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments. Uh, in the next video, which is going to be my $10 a week, week 18 uh, challenge coin. Uh, and then I have some, some uh, pickups I did uh, recently with Silver Bean Counter and Silver Heist I want to show off as well. Uh, let me know. And I will put this under the digital microscope and we can look at this all together uh, with all the cool colors and and little rock formations inside of the space rock. So I think that sounds pretty cool. So if that's something you're interested, let me know in the comments and we will bust that out first thing on the next video after the after the uh, next draw. So with that, I wanna say thank you very much, everybody. I cannot believe we made it to a thousand. We did this together. You're my stacking family. You're my, all my friends. And uh, I want you, want you to take care. And I want you to have a great weekend. Aloha and mahalo.